The Ventum bike course is still dotted with age group athletes pushing their way toward what they hope is their finish. They're not as fast as the pro athletes, but what they lack in pace, they more than make up for in purpose. Pushing limits through the heat-soaked lava fields and fierce crosswinds with no relief in sight. This is what purpose looks like. All of these athletes are trying to achieve something greater than themselves, building an equation with each pedal stroke where the total is greater than the sum of the parts. That's certainly the case for athlete number 152, Australian Taria Pitt. In September 2011, she was racing in an ultra marathon that converged with an out of control brush fire and Taria was caught in its path. That changed everything. I got to checkpoint two, which was about 25 kilometers into the race. And where we were, it was like a, a gorge. We were at the bottom of the gorge. We saw the fire coming. So we had two options. We could go back the way we came, but there was really high grass up to about our shoulders, so perfect fuel for the fire. Or we could go up the side of the gorge, which was rocky and had less vegetation, but fire actually travels faster going uphill. So it was like kind of literally the fire or the frying pan kind of choice. So I went up the side of the gorge. That's the way that I chose. So I was burnt to 65% of my body. I had seven fingers amputated. She was in a coma for about two weeks. When she came out of it, I talked to her and she was able to move her head and open her eyes and look at me. And that was really reassuring because I'd gone from saying, you know, she might not live. And then I've got this connection again with my girlfriend that, you know, I've, she looks at me in the eyes and I'm like here. And that just felt really reassuring for me to know that she knew that I was there. When the doctors told me I had to readjust my expectations of life and they would say, oh, you know, like, you know, you might be able to get a job, you might get married, you might be able to drive again. And inside I was just screaming because I was like, that's stuff that everyone does. So that, for me, that was, I guess, one of the most frustrating things was that because I had an accident, suddenly everyone's expectations of me plummeted. In hospital, it was a real team effort. So between myself, Michael Hoskin, my partner, and my mum. I remember the first day I said to them that I wanted to do an Iron Man. And they didn't say, oh, you know, like, that's silly. The doctor said you won't be able to run again. They just said, okay, great idea. Like, come on, we're gonna go, we gotta go get you working. We're gonna go get you training for the Iron Man. You know, and I think that's, as much as I have a lot of inner strength, I think having other people that believe in you and, and are willing to back you, I think that's such a beautiful thing. She's been to the darkest level there is to live. She couldn't even walk. You know, she'd scream in pain after two steps. And so I think this is more of a challenge for her and to say, hey, you know, I'm alive and I'm gonna challenge myself and I'm gonna go until I can't give up. You know, Michael and I, we went from boyfriend, girlfriend to patient, carer. And at times I just wanted to strangle Michael. And I'm sure at times he wanted to do the same for me. But I'm really grateful to have him in my life. She's probably stronger than what she was before I met her. When I look at her, I see Terea. I see a beautiful Terea. She's still the girl I fell in love with. Taria Pitt has proven anything is possible. My journey over the past five years, it's been pretty extraordinary and I never would have thought that I would have had the strength to do everything that I've done. So I'll be really proud of myself. Taria Pitt, you are 